Hello to this special episode of the Patches In Podcast. We call it a Patch Mini, Patch Notes. Patch Notes is quite good, I quite like that. Right. We planned to do this podcast around a year ago. I think it was about May, something like that. It was a long time ago anyway. Oh, it was the 28th of April, that's when oh. my, my notes were collated. <laughs> oh. So we watched the Scorpion King film, because our plan was to watch um, all of The Rock's films. Because, like, you know, it's quite a varied filmography. Is it? <laughs> well, it's actually quite in vogue now because he's getting a lot of criticism for Black Adam and his um, power that he gets over his films. Yeah, like, uh, because yeah. of his star power, he gets to basically be like an executive producer and decide. Yeah. yeah. And um, I don't think he's as popular as he wants. He's, he's no longer cool, The Rock. I think he's still cool, but he's just, he's not the draw that he used to be. Not in the sense that he'll still get the box office numbers, but it's not. There's no allure anymore. It's just oh, it's just the rock in it. Yeah, I think it's it's like rock saturation. Like he's he's had so many films out where he plays the rock. Yeah, aye. like I, did, I there was a lot I didn't watch. I don't think you watched Rampage. I didn't watch San Andreas. I watched San Andreas. It was, was that? bad. Yeah, I hate disaster films anyway, so I never watched it. Yeah. Um, and that tower one? Was Skyscraper? That? Yeah, that was yeah. awful as well. Yeah, yeah. Awful. but I think these are for the Chinese market. He's massive abroad. Yeah. He's massive everywhere. I was going to say, he's, he's, he's massive, pretty big everywhere. <laughs> he is massively broad. Um, <laughs> I still like The Rock. It's just that he has to be in the right role. And guess what? The Scorpion King was... Oh, it was a role. I mean, at the time, it was pretty big. And even his like salary, I think it was the the highest lead actor paid yeah. was like five point five million or something like that, which at the time was the biggest for ever. a debut. Yeah. I think for a debut actor, but like obviously at the time he was the Rock from uh, WWE, which was the biggest entertainment in the world at the time. Yeah, Rock and Stone Cold were were massive, and they stole our guy, they stole the Rock from wrestling, and I think a lot of people were kind of mad about it for a while. But yeah, well they played on that as well because he kind of went like corporate Rock, didn't he? Yeah, so, I mean. At the time, I don't think The Rock could have done any wrong. I quite liked them. Um, the Mummy was a great film. The Mummy Returns wasn't wasn't as good, and The Rock was in that for a good five minutes. Then he came back as the worst CGI scorpion of all time. Yeah, like an actual scorpion monster thing, which was just strange. Right, so the guy that directed um, The Scorpion King, Hamish, his name is Chuck Russell. Very unassuming. Name. Do you know what else he has directed? Uh, some other awful things, probably. Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Right. I mean, that, that's kind of surprising because it's a totally different type of film. Yeah. But I do remember them being cheesy as fuck as well, like, especially as they went on the Nightmare on Elm Street films. So that kind of, that tracks. The Blob, the remake of The Blob from the 90s. Or I think that one might be the 80s. Late 80s remake of The Blob, which used to, like, I never watched that film, but the the thought of it terrified me. Yeah. It was yeah. A bit of a, a, yeah, a bit creepy, but... That's just a weird idea as well. You can just imagine that pitch meeting, you know, like there's this blob that you know goes after people, and it's just a it's just a weird one. It's better than that tire film, and the one that's most surprising is uh, the mask, as in Jim Carrey the mask. Yeah, really, yeah, it was him. Well, well, see when you watch that film now, it's it's it's, it's so nineties it kind of hurts. Like, yeah, it's, it's very nineties. I love that film, but mostly it was held by Jim Carrey and Cameron Diaz, like. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, the, I think they actually changed it for Jim Carrey because the mask, obviously, in the comics, if you've ever read them, he's just like a murderous psychopath. It's just crazy, like closer to kind of horror type stuff. But then they got Jim Carrey and they were like, oh, let's make it funny because he's funny. He and, was the biggest star in the world at the time. Yeah, and I think that was the, the best choice. He also made a Razor, which is a, a 90s Arnie film that no one really liked or cared about. It's the one where he shoots the alligator and says like your luggage or crocodile and says your luggage no. you remember that no i don't no. think i've seen it but and i definitely don't want to now after that it's not a great film it's not true lies put it that way yeah um or any early 90s late 80s army film to yeah. those uh he hasn't really done anything i recognize after he made a film called fringe i am wrath i am wrath is that a jason statham film that's wrath of man oh well a yeah well one, yeah. uh Jungly in Paradise City. It sounds like not. He's, he's kind of went downhill from the Scorpion King, which was crazy. But it's pretty <laughs> low. Come. It's pretty low, to be yeah. honest. Um, so uh, the guy that made the mask, um, David Hater, is one of the screenplay writers. 
All right, okay. So I'm with Snake. Yeah. I also heard that this film was only 70 minutes long after its initial edit, so they were like, ah, oh, shit, we need more film. Yeah, which, I mean, even that in itself is a bad omen. Like, all the, when we've cut out all the shit, it doesn't even make up a 90 minute film, you know? And then they had to record more. It's like, maybe just take that as a sign. Like, its budget was 60 million and it made 180 million at the box office. These are all Wikipedia facts, so these could all be completely wrong. So, yeah, but even then, it gives you an idea. Like, you know, it, it was a success at the box office a lot, and, you know, because of The Rock, basically. It had a very, very um, set and set and matching soundtrack uh, by a new metal band Godsmack. Yeah, of course. You know, if you've got a Middle Eastern deserty movie, then you've got to have Godsmack in there, you know? That's part of the, the later conversation. Is it Middle Eastern? Is, yeah, it, is it Egyptian? Is it East African? Is it Southeast Asia? Who knows? Who it could be knows? all. Yeah. It could be all of them. See, if you actually probably looked at all of like the weapons that they use and the costumes that they use, you could probably list off half the countries in the world it's yeah. probably just a mash of absolute shit yeah it's probably every set that they had in the the like the buildings like, have we got any kind of vaguely ethnic sets <laughs> that we could set up for the rock to walk through like and at this time he was like he wasn't actually like the rock now where he, he looks like a muscle with eyes yeah, uh, yeah. he actually kind of looks like a person yeah he was uh, the rock he wasn't the boulder quite yet yeah and he's a lot more comedic in this as well I think like, I think he, he he wasn't taking himself quite as seriously. He was having fun with it, you know. It probably his youthful first time doing a proper movie. You know, he would have been excited, and now he's just kind of got his wee smouldering serious face on all the time. Right, Hamish, this film came in two thousand two. I have the soundtrack in front of me. Um, I'm going to name some some bands here, and you tell me if they fit the the Middle Eastern. Okay, feel. right. Uh, Pod. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Here, here comes the boom. No, it's not. That I mean, one. you know, they're they're very religious, so it's, there's a wee connection there. Drowning pool. I mean, a lot of bodies were hitting the floor. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. System of a Down. Uh, Armenian, aren't they? So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Creed. Creed. Nah, I don't, nah, don't see why. Creed the the again, Christian no. metal in there. So. Yeah, but we've already got that covered. The POD, yeah. they were. They're, they're pretty Christian. Uh, Nickelback. They just fucking. They were just everywhere at that time. Really. Yeah, Hoobastank. That's a weird one. Rob Zombie. I. I mean, yeah, that's a bit of a strange one. But Twelve Stones. I don't know if you know Twelve Stones. They were in actually the my favorite film of all time, which is uh, Never Back Down. Uh, Seven Dust, Breaking Point, Cold Chamber. My God, this is the most two thousand and two album I've ever heard. Like I had this probably and like on my mini disc player back you, in the day. You saw that every morning on Kerrang when you got up. Yeah, and put on Kerrang. Who was the actual... Was there a, someone that put this together? I don't think there was, like... Let, let's see. They just got a Cat House CD and <laughs> yeah. put that on over it. Uh, nah. Um, we have notes, right? So we wrote notes at the time when we were watching this, but the notes are just, like, one one like phrase, one sentence, reminders. Yeah, because we obviously had planned to do it so soon after, it should have been fresh in our memory. And, you know, I've done a lot of drinking since then. But I think as a defence mechanism, you just try and wipe this movie from my memory. Yeah, this film, like, I remember watching it when I was younger, but never start to finish. It was always, what, an ITV2 film? You know, like, mm. the kind of second-rate channel that has, like, a film with, like, adverts through it, it's all cut up. Yeah. Like, I always caught bits of it, and because I love The Rock, you'd watch a little bit, and then you'd, you'd forget about it. But the first, first word I've got is um, cheese. I mean, that basically encapsulates the whole movie yeah it's like overacted overblown like it's not doesn't take itself seriously but then takes itself very seriously sometimes yeah yeah it's i think cheese is probably should have been the tagline yeah uh, aye. it uh, was something stupid like uh hold on let me see warrior legend king we should have cheese on the end of that at least yeah it kind of it kind of reminded me of um you know the kind of like there was like hercules and xena Mm. from like the 90s uh, those kind of like weird TV shows that like tried to look like they were back in the mi- middle ages or like a- ancient times or whatever and it's, it just had like a, a sheen of television over yeah. it. The thing is with those shows they actually, because they were shows rather than just movies they they could go a bit more into depth of characters and storylines and you know I think they were quite well received but this you know what was cut down to a 70 minute and then had to be refilmed like 90 minute movie there's not enough time 
Not that you can't ever get a good movie in 90 minutes, but it was just never on the cards for this, for the Scorpion King. Yeah, but you don't have enough content to make an hour and a half. It's not a good start. Yeah. Uh, I've got uh, super arrows because I remember right at the beginning, it bursts in, Mm. it shoots someone with an arrow. The arrow doesn't go through the person. It doesn't cause uh, like damage. It like punches the person through the wall. Yeah, they like fly out of the wee hut. Yeah, instead of like a like an arrow, it's more like a cannonball. Yeah, which you know, eh, physics and you know, where's the blood? You know, this is like yeah. I think they're fighting. trying to you know, they're trying to be like, oh, look how strong he is because he's big, muscly. But that's still not how arrows work. Like, yeah. <laughs> no matter how strong you are. Yeah, like is it how blunt is his arrows? Like <laughs> if if he's if he's shooting them that strong, that they should go through him. I know we're we're taking this very seriously, but like, yeah. I expected this film to be better. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of bits like that where you just like that the physics just don't work on that one at all. But what you got? What, what's your next note? My, well, my first note is that the Rock's first word is "boo." I don't remember that scene. Uh, but does it? Does he not burst in and go "boo"? Oh, is that the wee yeah, hut? Yeah, that's maybe why I wrote cheese. Yeah, I mean that's just. That's just setting yourself up to fail in it. Yeah, but it's, it's comedy. It's, it's, it's his rock character. He's not playing the Scorpion King, Hamish. He's playing the rock as the Scorpion King. I know, but I mean, was this. this, this see, the, the top three genres on like IMDb action, adventure, fantasy. Nowhere does it say comedy. So Yeah, true. You know. true. That was inadvertently. Yeah. Like, there. It, was, yeah. it was funny just because it was shit. Um, and then I've got Die Well. On his knees, throat slit. So I think he, he told someone to die well, and then it's like, oh, he didn't die well because you died like a bitch on your knees and getting ah, your throat right, cut. Yeah. Well, you're noticing different things from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I've got buried in the sand, never looked more like a rock. <laughs> 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 I think that's the wee scene with the fire ants. Like it's him and his pal, and they're like up to buried up in their necks. Up yeah. To so that was him actually like looking like a rock. His big giant head. Yeah. He's mad weird like long hair but like high forehead. Yeah. Like uh I've got shitty cheap montage. So I think this is where it goes travelling. But it, like each like scene looks like Morocco, Egypt, India, yeah, Thailand, Absolute Japan. Mishmash of places. Yeah, it's it's doesn't it feel like it's actually set anywhere like you know of? <laughs> like yeah. or or is a real place. Uh, of cheap TV sets. A lot of this I remember being like marketplaces that are just like shawls. Yeah. And they're just walking through and the rock's looking mightily tanned and like just like they're shiny. Still, still perfect teeth, you know, like oh. tanned, tanned and dirty, but still everyone's got absolutely perfect teeth. In it. Big, bigger than everyone. Yeah. Like, like just a strange, strange kind of looking place. Yeah. Um, I remember, so the, the bad guy in it, I can't remember, is it Mem, Memnon or something? Yeah, Memnon. Memnon. So he's like touted as this like amazing sword fighter, and then there's a scene where he's got wee sticks, and he fights off a couple of guys, and then I just remember us we were saying like you know those wee toys that you go ow, <laughs> just to, like, if, if we just uh, put that over it, that would have saved the whole movie, you know. Just I, I'm gonna clip that. We should edit it. Yeah. And put it over. <laughs> uh, he's an uh, Ac- Acadian. Yeah, that's what he is. Uh, I was trying to remember that. I was thinking Arcadian, but no, that's my computer games thing in my head. Uh, the the people's eyebrow when someone mentions him having a, a harem <laughs> and I think like he, he was saying that he wants to try and separate it from his rock persona but they had he had to do something yeah I'm sure he, he body slams someone in this film and he, I think I'm sure he hits the rock bottom at some point as well that's contractual he has to hit the rock bottom in the people's eye, eyebrow every yeah, film yeah he, he, he still does that he still does the, like the rock bottom and things which is ridiculous uh, the sorceress uh, her reveal was um, pretty good uh, yeah yeah. I, I, I think I, the one that I've got noted to that is uh, she's just wearing a scarf <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was just this, this wee thin bit of material and I think her nipples are covered by her hair and then it's just this tiny wee like silk see through like scarf thing and it's just like that's just there for the for the boys in it they're in the desert how's that practical she's gonna be real itchy yeah, like, but it's warm though uh, so it's warm in the desert that's mate. true but like all those ants and scorpions and stuff Amish. yeah uh the camel yeah the camel that like talks to the rock and yeah then... he can understand it apparently and it understands him perfectly what he wants and, and he likes camels because they're smarter than horses which makes sense right and I mean, camels can work in the desert better than horses and yeah. stuff like that 
But a camel that he can not just under he understands camelese. The camel doesn't speak English. Yeah. I just kinda of grunts and I mean if it if it can understand him and he can understand it, then I would certainly say it is smarter than a horse. So yeah, maybe true. he's onto something. Also he kept giving the rock advice, so was he smarter than rock? <laughs> like Yeah, he should he should have been the star of this. Should have been the the camel king. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I remember the acting being pretty awful in it. Uh, the guy who played Men Menmon was pretty good, but like Memnon, yeah, um, he was he played like the archetypal villain, like English villain, of course. English villain, yeah. you know, you've got to have an English villain if you're if your Middle Eastern villain isn't English, is it really historically accurate? Um, also, I love the power that she set up; like she could see the future, the like sorceress, but it wouldn't work if she lost her virginity. Yeah. But like at the end, she was like, oh, "I just, I just kind of, I just kind of made that up so he wouldn't try and hit on me." Touch him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, smart girl. You know, he's actually he's from near us, Dundee. Oh, so he's oh, he's a Scottish guy pretending to be English. Yeah, pretending to be Middle Eastern makes total sense for it. And Stephen Brand, his name is. Um, some of the other things he's done. He was in an episode of The Sandman recently. He did a voice in uh, Call of Duty Vanguard, Star Wars: Old Republic onslaught. Hawaii Five O, not a lot of, not a lot of interesting stuff to be honest. But not recently, anyway. Don't support them. If you've ever listened to our uh, podcast about Scottish places, Dundee was right at the bottom. Aye, it was. It was at the top of being the bottom. Aye, exactly. Fuck Dundee. Um, there was every nationality in this. I think everyone had. The, no one had made any attempt to be. Um, actually Middle Eastern. Yeah, no accents put on, just, just speaking in a normal voice. Like, English, American, you know, you know, Canadian. Like, there was a lot of, like, weird English accents in there, but none of them were actually, like, Middle Eastern or Southeast Asian or whatever this film is meant to be. Anywhere even in the the close vicinity of where you could imagine it would be made. It, it gave me the feel, you know, the 90s Aladdin film? Everyone loves that film, right? It's meant to be Baghdad. Agrabah. Agrabah, yeah. Yeah, but they made it around the time of the Gulf War, so, yeah. you know, they were the bad guys at the time. Yeah. Are they still the bad guy? I don't know. But, like, <laughs> they couldn't Depends call Depends who you ask, I suppose. But, like, like the culture looked Middle Eastern, but a lot of the stuff looked Indian. And, the, and like, give me that kind of vibe where they were like, look, we want, we want something that's not European, so just take whatever's not European and put it in. Uh, put it in. Yeah, anything that's not, like... American or European, anything that's not like a brand, like a Ford, no no Ford camels. In there, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, although, speaking of the acting though, Michael Clark Duncan, he's always good. Like, yeah. Even but- even when he's in things like Daredevil, his Kingpin and stuff like that, he still kind of slightly redeems it a wee bit. I think he was at a high at this point. It was after just after Green Mile, he was doing Daredevil, he was doing this. He he was probably the the most recognisable actor, and I said like obviously I'm going to mention because I've got it written down here one word Theoden, so Bernard Howe who was God damn it his name Phileas 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 I I was like I know that face is that Theoden from Lord of the Rings yes it definitely is um he he's fine in it he he obviously uh, at the time was playing. Theoden Lord of the Rings as well, so that's some high and some low from the year two thousand two for him. Yeah. But a like, roller coaster. The ro- like they obviously got like if you look at the the I say star power, but like there's some names in this and some money put behind it. Yeah, and that's why it's weirdly disappointing because it definitely comes from the Mummy franchise, which especially at the start was really fucking good as well. The first the first Mummy film I think is incredible. It's like so I wouldn't say fun. it was you know one of the all time bests, but it's just. You could watch it to this day and still be like, I'm really enjoying this. It's know? a fun adventure film. Yeah. Like, kind of Indiana Jones type. Which is what I thought this was going to be like, but it was... I felt like they didn't know what to do with the character. Well, see, the thing is, obviously, it's it's in The Mummy Returns that you first see The Rock, isn't it? Yeah. And he, you know, be- he becomes this actual big scorpion monster. They don't really talk about that at all in this. So yeah. I, I think no. a lot of people were like, oh, that's quite... Interesting, like how are they gonna how are they gonna explain that? And then this film was released, and people were like, "Oh, that didn't fucking tell me anything about that." Do you think it tells you anything in the five five other Scorpion King films? I don't know. I've not seen think, them. I don't think so. I, I very much so. doubt it. I watched the what one's Randy Couture in? The I think it's the third one. I think right. I watched the beginning of that to see Randy Couture, and I was like, Randy Couture's pretending to be Egypt, eh, Egypt, Egyptian here, yeah, and with these weird American accent and like. Uh, 
fucking cauliflower ears and his fucked up MMA face. Like not really selling it, was no, he? No, no, no. And then, the Rock wasn't in it. There was no Mummy Returns or Mummy like Link. I don't think the Rock was in any of the other ones, was he? He is trying to reboot. Obviously, the series. Um, I don't know what, the, what like would they play into the fact that he was a bad guy in Mummy Returns? Like, yeah. So what uh, happens? He was a he was an antagonist, not a protagonist. So, so he's always got to win the Rock, and he's always got to look good. Yeah. So I wonder how that plays into it, especially when he plays like a villain as Black Adam, and then plays him as like an anti-hero type thing. Yeah. So I wonder, I wonder if he's doing it just to like try and redeem that part of his career. Maybe, maybe he's just running out of options. <laughs> well, uh, he could go back to wrestling. Ah, he's getting a bit old for that, though, isn't he? Well, I don't know. His body's probably fucking fine for it. I know he hurt himself for the John Cena match at yeah. WrestleMania. Uh, to be honest, I think uh, at this point, no one really wants to add him to anything massive because he brings his own baggage. Like, yeah, the Adam yeah. and Black Adam, he brought baggage with the fact that he didn't, he didn't want to work with. Uh, Shazam team, yeah, because I, I thought, thought it was too big for that. Beneath them, yeah. Brock, Even though like Black Adam and Shazam are like enemies, you know what I mean? That's yeah, that's the na- that's the natural thing, and I think it would have helped both the franchises if you know the Rock gets brought into something that is successful. Because yeah, yeah, Shazam did all right, didn't Shazam it? I mean, did the... pretty well, yeah. and it, I actually quite liked Shazam. It was a different type of story. Yeah, um, but he brought back. Uh, Henry Cavill to uh, play Superman to to tease some kind of Superman thing and you're like yeah forced the wee cameo and stuff like that and that's not your franchise though and then Henry Cavill's now no longer Superman so it makes that seem completely pointless and yeah. we all know the story by now but like see when you look back from this rock to Scorpion King rock yeah it's very funny because his acting's almost the same I I mean he he doesn't have to get acting lessons. He doesn't really have to improve. He he can memorize his script. That's all he needs to do, really. Yeah. Because people will watch him because he's the Rock. I mean, he was he does he is funny large man mm. or serious, serious large, large man. man. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but serious in a fighting way, not serious in a, like a it's an emotional situation way. Yeah, I was actually thinking the other day, like. If you know, say, if I was making a a movie and it was an emotional movie or whatever, would I take the risk of of offering an actor like The Rock the shot to try and prove themselves? But it would be a massive risk, you know what I mean? Because I just can't even imagine it. But, yeah. But it must be frustrating. Well, well, it might be frustrating for him if he actually gives a fuck. He might just be happy making loads of money in these big action movies. Did you see Batista kind of took a shot at him? No, I didn't see that. He says uh, he said something along the lines of he doesn't want to get um, he doesn't want to be typecast like other wrestler mm, actors. Right. He wants to actually be an actor. Yeah, right. and like kind of and no so many words go. I don't want to be the Rock. He does he does acting films like WWE yeah. films, like Rock films. I want to be an actor. He wants to do serious things. I mean, he is a really funny actor, Batista as well. He's sort of got that Rock image where he's like large and yeah, kind of dumb sometimes but in like Glass Onion he was like stupid and massive and, like, that's yeah. his character big stupid guy but he wants to actually play like more serious characters he actually wants to be a good actor he's done a lot of acting lessons he's wanting to do like smaller films and stuff yeah and, and he's actually generally a nice guy as well yeah. I haven't I've read I don't yeah. know him personally no I mean like I, I saw something recently and it was a discussion on who's the best wrestler turned actor and basically everyone was saying Batista you know his, his performance was good in Glass Onion, for example, but he's only really going to get offered roles that he fits the profile for, which is big, dumb, strong guy. You know what I mean? I know. It's, play your strengths, but yeah. he's a play your strengths. Yeah. Unless he wants to you know, maybe work on something himself or find someone willing to take a punt, but he's. I don't think he's going to get much opportunity to, you know, stretch his acting chops. It'll always be supporting roles. Mm. He'll never, he'll, he'll never be serious actor in a main role because you can't take him seriously because he's just too big. I mean, it was he was in Blade Runner, wasn't he? He was in Dune as well. Yeah, but they're all kind of side roles. Yeah, and but it's big giant films he's in as well. Like, could you imagine The Rock in Dune? Mm, nah, yeah, I, I couldn't. It'd be silly. Yeah, yeah but it'd be, he'd be like Rock Bottom and the, the wee flying like the wee like mosquito planes <laughs> and stuff like that. The thing is as well, like Batista is still not. 
well, you know, say for like, I was going to say adults, like we're not adults, but for people a bit older than us, Batista can get away with not being recognised as Batista from WWE, whereas even people more older than us, they will recognise The Rock and they will know that he was a wrestler. Yeah, because he was the biggest wrestler in the world at one yeah. point. But, but Batista could just seem like, oh, he's just a big guy. Yeah, no, uh, he had, like, uh, people talk about John Cena as well. They've all got the same problem. They're too big. They're, they're, they're all, like, ridiculously big. Like, noticeably big. Yeah, it limits their options. John Cena knows his limits, I think. And Peacemaker's fantastic. Brilliant and, show, yeah. Um, but definitely Batista's kind of overtaking The Rock as the best wrestler turned actor. Which I would never have guessed. Like, I would never have saw it. I mean, I would say that John Cena's better than The Rock acting. After watching things like Peacemaker and Suicide Squad, I'd say he's better than The Rock. It's, it's, a, it's a low bar. I don't know, it's a low bar, but I still, that's where I would put them. I'd put Batista, then Cena, then The Rock. It's a, it's a weird, it's a weird, it's like an argument I don't care they have, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, no, The Rock's better than John Cena acting, you're like, mm, who, who gives a fuck? Uh, who cares? <laughs> Uh, so I had to actually ask him about this note before and I've wrote Venom isn't blood and I went what does that mean? Do you want to explain it? Yeah so basically they, someone dips an arrowhead into Scorpion's Venom and stabs him with it and that would normally kill him but the, the sorceress and it heals him and then she says he now has the blood of the Scorpion How? As if this Venom is magically turned into blood and you know, that's, I don't get that's it. what he's running on. I don't fucking get it. And I thought maybe when that came up, oh, maybe that's going to have something to do with how he turns into a big scorpion monster. But that's all you hear of it. That's it done. Apart from <laughs> someone at the very end of it calling him the Scorpion King. And it's like, why would you even call him that? Like, remember that time you get, you know, stabbed with an arrow and almost died? Like, that's not even, why would he want to be called the Scorpion King, really? Yeah. That's, I think, in my notes at the very end, I've got Scorpion King question mark. Because I'm like, where does this... How, why is the Scorpion King then? Mm. So, like, the only Scorpion thing in the, the film is that yeah, Venom blood yeah. shite that they say. Also, do you remember the part of the film where he bursts into a room and it's just hundreds of half-naked women? Yeah. Like, or does he not, like, get catapulted into the room or something like that? Does that not remind you? Is that not a scene in Aladdin? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. yeah. Aye. These fuckers watched Aladdin, didn't they? And they were like, we're doing this. Yeah. But that's like uh, Playboy Playmates or somewhere it was in there. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. I had to look up everyone just for yeah, research, for research, research purposes. Yeah, no, absolutely. But this this film really strikes me as early two thousands um, cash in. Like, yeah, it was the the success of the Mummy. Oh shit! How can we make? How can we milk this scorpion more? You know? Yeah, like <laughs> let's let's have the Rock um, have a film about this character, the Scorpion King, with. V- Minimal mention to what was in The Mummy Returns. Yeah. Make him a good guy because he was obviously the bad guy. Let's not mention the CGI scorpion yeah, rock. ever again. Yeah, like, I don't get why they couldn't, like, uh, like show a thing where, like, something bad happens and he turns in, like, like show something that leads into The Mummy Returns. Yeah, like the, you know, if, if they really want to go down the whole Venom blood thing, maybe the Venom's taking over him and giving him violent tendencies or something. Like, I mean, there's, there's something there that you could work with and it would be, you know, normal kind of Hollywood story bullshit, but there could be at least something. But they just they just didn't ever mention it again. Maybe when we venture into watching the the sequels we might find something, but who knows. I feel sad when you said that there, like we'll watch the sequels and I was like, Oh that's a lot of wasted time. Yeah. <laughs> but like we had a look at there's obviously this is a gaming podcast mostly. We had a look and there's two games. There's a PlayStation two GameCube game Obviously, it was the time of the fucking yeah, license game, then, yeah. which is about six and a half hours long, and we're going to give that a try, we might even stream it, and there's also a Game Boy Advance game, which I'm more interested in, because they seem, see, because they were like, right, we can't just... And they were a bit limited with, yeah. you know, the the assets and things like that, like the, the graphics, for example, so they had to focus more on the gameplay, so out of the two, that's probably going to be the more enjoyable game to actually play. Uh, and that, like, that, that'll be like a cool wee side scrolling platform or thing yeah. and I don't imagine it's going to have much to do with Scorpion King at all apart from the box art you know I don't think that you're going to you, right. could, you could take a scene from that game and probably just not know what the fuck you were actually playing at one point in this film The Rock springboards from his back mm. you know that move that him and like Shawn Michaels do yeah 
And that wasn't his idea, surprisingly. That was the director's idea, because they wanted to show how big he is and how agile he is. Uh, so even though he's like six foot four or however big he is, he can still jump up? Yeah. Like, like, a, like a wee Sean Michaels? Well, who knows how tall he is, because it keeps changing over the years. <laughs> is he 6'3"? Is he 6'5"? You know, who it depends knows? how big his lifts are. Um, if he's got a if he's got a co-star that's you know a bit tall, he probably puts the higher lifts in. But when he's working with Kevin Hart, he doesn't need to bother about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, that's the thing. Like a lot, of, like a lot of people in this film are bigger than the Rock. Like Michael, Michael Clark Duncan, Clark Duncan yeah. bigger than the Rock, yeah, obviously. Awesome. But I don't think, and f- I've not seen a film in a while where the Rock's not the biggest character. I know that he's bigger now in general. He's got a lot more muscle on him, but he's not. Tall, yeah. He's not like ridiculously tall. He's, ah, he's not like tower. We just said he's what, between six three and six five, probably, yeah. so, which is six four. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> I know. I just realised I said between six three and six five. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, he he probably does fluctuate a bit though, depending on you know if he's wearing boots for a role. We probably do have lifts in them. Oh, Hamish, I've just found uh, something we have to do. Uh, there's a DVD special feature out there with a hundred minutes of this film with all its special. Uh, like alternative takes and deleted scenes so it's with oh, all God. of the takes they cut out it's only a hundred minutes long how long was it normally like 90 90 minutes almost exactly right yeah. oh god can we really do it to ourselves again I don't know I don't think I would want to watch this one again I think I'd want to watch um the next, the next rock film. We're going to do a rock film, so the next one would be Walking Tall or mm, Rundown, Rundown if you're or, listening from America and I honestly think that still like I remember it being a good film I enjoyed it at the time yeah certainly did because Sean William Scott's in it mm-hmm. you know from American Pie fame like Christopher, Christopher Walken, Walken yeah. is in it and he does this speech he does a speech in the office I've never forgot and like they're trying to find Sean William Scott in The Rock and he does this crazy speech to like a cool song and it's just the most Christopher Walken scene like he probably <laughs> didn't even know what film this is yeah and they were just like right uh, G up the guys get them ready and they go out and you're like Fucking yes, Christopher Walken giving a weird speech and saying some weird shit. Like that's it. That's that, nine out of ten. Yeah. There you go, straight away. <laughs> See, I think that he probably soon like with the Scorpion King and being the leading man. But there's there was a very slight like his friend was kind of a comedy relief. But it wasn't until the rundown or Walking Tongue that it probably clicked for yeah. him and a lot of other people. Like, oh, see, having a funny sidekick and like Sean William Scott, and now with people like Kevin Hart. You probably realised then, like, that's what I need, like, to fill in the gaps of my acting inability. You know, you need someone else there to do the funny stuff, and The Rock can be funny. He needs, but... he needs like, someone to bounce off of, the Yeah, he? yeah. Um, what, the one thing I do remember from Walking Tall, like, at the beginning, he goes to, like, a bar and he's talking to, like, NFL guys, he's making money off someone, I think. Hmm. I remember him rock bottom that guy and me marking out like fuck when I was like fifteen or so. I'm like, did you see that daddy rock bottom time? My dad's like, shut up. Like, Who cares? Uh, I'm like, hmm. but we'll get to uh, walking tall at some point because your event. No wait, it's welcome to the jungle. Uh, walking tall is. It's walking tall the casino one. Walking tall is a casino one, right? Like that's more yeah. of a serious film. Like see when I think about it, that's more of a serious like character film because yeah. he was a lot smaller in that film as well. If I remember right, like, yeah. he was still muscly rock but like he was more normal sized yeah I just remember the, well, the main part that I remember from that scene was just where he gets like huckled into the back and they like cut him open basically yeah, yeah that was and that was the main, like shows the, shows the scar to the courtroom or something like that Neil McDonough like, or whatever the guy's name is I think he's, like, been, he's yeah. like a bad guy in like so many cheap Everything, films yeah, uh, he and, just plays a good cunt yeah. but like those are the films that like started his career we're eventually going to get to the Disney era where mm. he does like Escape to Witch Mountain and the Tooth Fairy and that, and then you're like, God, this is like the lull area of this uh, of his career. Was I mean, it higher before? Was it really? I can't remember what his breakout. What was his big breakout hit again? Like now, like he, he went. He, like, everyone assumed he was just going. To, that was it. The Rock's film career was like failing at that point. Like he was, he failed the Disney stuff. He wasn't really hitting uh, the major the heights that people thought he could and then all of a sudden he came out and he was like four stone heavier with just muscle on him was it things like pain and gain and stuff like that or was it before pain that? and gain was great um mm. faster and fast five uh right, that, around that era he started to become big again 
Yeah, so I remember watching Faster in 2010, which was kind of like a uh, kind of more serious role he was in where he was like getting revenge for his brother. I'm sure Billy Bob Thornton was in that film and he eventually turned out to be the bad guy. Spoilers. Uh, no, wait, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Probably. Um, but I remember that being good. And then I was thinking, oh, The Rock's actually like, you know, when you really doing, think doing back, he's, yeah, when you actually think back, he has done a lot of things and he's just done some surprisingly I mean, interesting films. He was in the other guys for about 10 minutes, I don't know. Him and Samuel Jackson. Yeah. The, yeah. And it's probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen. See when they said, uh, aim for the bushes. I thought they were going to do something. Yeah. And they just jumped off the uh, the roof. Everyone knows that scene, probably. But he, he did things like Fast Five after that, which I think propelled him into the top. Pain and Gain, which was weirdly good, but like also weirdly like, hey, the American dream is to steal everyone's money. Uh, yeah, which, yeah. you know. Uh, did you ever see Hercules? No, I don't think I did. Oh, no, wait, no, no, I think I did actually, yeah. Because uh, I remember him fighting like the Nemean Lion and stuff like that. Uh, but it's, it's exactly what you expect it to be. You know what I mean? San Andreas, Gem and Holograms. Uh, that I don't give it. That's a proper film. Central Intelligence. I found that pretty funny. Yeah, that was quite funny. Yeah, yeah. it's Kevin Hart, obviously. But it's that typical buddy film, you know. Yeah, Moana. Love that film. Baywatch, mate. Did you ever watch Baywatch? I think I did actually. Yeah, like, like Zac Efron and they worked so well together. Zac Efron. Like, I mean, this film is batshit crazy it's like, fuck I mean, all to do with actual Baywatch I think I mean, you know David I mean? Asimov was in it yeah at the end or something like that was he yeah. not but I don't think it really I mean I never watched the old Baywatch show but I just can't imagine it being like this I mean it, it was I thought it was funny and batshit crazy and it had some really <laughs> good actors in it and you know there was a lot of women in you know bathing suits and stuff <laughs> and, you know that, the, the rock and Zac Efron were kicking about with a fucking like chiseled fucking abs and you're like oh, god damn it man taking all your boxes is it yeah. uh, all my boxes mate yeah. uh, like i even think Zac Efron said he could never get back to that shape because mm. it I was mean, like, awful you're, it you're, was fucking awful uh, if you're gonna be working with a rock and you know he's gonna have his top off you're gonna need you need to try and get a bit more trim and a bit heavier you know what i mean like but he i know this isn't really the kind of thing we're talking about on this but he had a good run of movies like a lot of kind of similar ones like making we- making Dave need wedding dates and stuff like that, but they were all very kind of similar films, Dirty Grandpa and stuff like that. But Baywatch was, aye, uh, it was alright, it was decent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rampage, Sky we talked about them, whatever. Bad. Jumanji films, pretty funny. Yeah, they're okay. I mean, they aren't as good as the original Jumanji, and it's the it's the cast that makes them films better than just The Rock. Yeah. Um, I am gonna have to watch the Fast and the Furious series. I haven't actually ever watched them. Uh, Any of them? Yeah. Uh, I've seen the first three or four. Right, okay. Uh, and then it kind of got a bit like, I don't really know what's going on anymore. Who is it? Are they not dead? Is he not dead? I don't know. Yeah. Right. Hobbs and Shaw, I did see though, which is a Fast and the Furious. That's like a spin off, yeah. Spin off. Mm-hmm. I was. I liked that film, and then I thought the film had ended, and it continued. Aye. And then was, it ended yeah, again. Yeah. And then it continued. Big massive climax. And then you're like, oh, that was that was all right. That was, and then it's like, now we're going to Hawaii. And it's like, what? <laughs> now we have to get, um, what's his name from the... Uh, oh, Roman, Roman Reigns. Reigns yeah. in, we need to get Roman Reigns in this. Uh, we, we need to fight them with spears. You go fight these guys with spears? See, I've got a feeling that that was The Rock's influence as well. We talked briefly about that, you know, with the Black Adam stuff. Basically, he gets to make the decisions. I'm pretty sure... The original Hobbs and Shaw probably did end with a big set piece with a big truck they were driving yeah. and stuff like that. But then he was like, because at that time he was all on his Instagram talking about hailing from Hawaii and, you know, the good mana and stuff like that. Yeah. And so I, I'm like 99% sure that he was like, I'm not doing it unless there's a big section of the movie in Hawaii. So... You that, know, bit, that, bit, like, that bit was too long. Uh, uh, bored me, man. Tacked uh, on and uh, you'd already went through the... The kind of emotions of seeing a movie and seeing a climax, and it was just kind of like I've, I've, I've seen enough. I, th- I don't think I can remember the end of the film. Like, and I, like, well, eventually, probably, maybe we're gonna a uh, hundred years get to it. Yeah. But right, so that's the Scorpion King. Yeah, anything yeah. else to add to that, Hamish? Would you watch it again? You're gonna watch the Scorpion King two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight reboot. Well, I mean, we're, we're going to have to, aren't we? If we're going to continue down this road. Content for content, sake, mate. Yeah, yes. I mean, I certainly wouldn't watch the first one again. Like, They can only get better. Well, Hopefully. yeah, they can't get worse, so... Yeah, I suppose that's right. Actually, I want to watch The Mummy, actually. We'll watch The Mummy, right? <laughs> That'll yeah. do. I mean, technically, if we want to watch 
rock movies and stuff like that, wrestling movies, then Mummy Returns, we'd need to at least watch that. Yeah, that's true. I um, think we were only going for rock as leading man, weren't we, at first, like yeah. his leading roles. So, you know, Fast and Furious might not be one. Is he leading that? Is Vin Diesel leading that? Yeah, who knows? Let's ask them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean uh, yeah, we'll need to figure that out, but... Right, so what, what what number would you give uh, Scorpion King out of ten? Well, I gave it ten. Uh-uh. Um, shit, for for like watching it now or yeah. at the time? Oh, um, at in two thousand two, what would you have given it, and what would you give it now in twenty twenty two? This film is now twenty years old, by the way. Or no, it's twenty twenty three. Fucking hell, I've lost so much time. <laughs> this film is twenty one years, years old. old. Yeah, um, I mean, at the time, it it probably was better. It probably would have been like a, a six because it's still awful when you really kind of look at it. Yeah. But when you're younger and you'd have been fourteen at the time, Hamish. What yeah. would fourteen year old Hamish say? Oh, fourteen year old Hamish probably would have said it was like a eight or something like that. He probably would have been. Yeah, you you, you were going to say too. ten there. No, 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 no. And like I, I know I was stupid back like, then, but I know the I was stupid. And half naked women. Yeah, I mean that's that's all the points. That's that's, that's all where all box. the points came from. Like you know, because there's nothing else really. And the about camel. It. And the camel, of course, obviously. yeah, you know, like yeah. a like a sentient speaking, understandable camel, obviously. But now, I mean, like even a four seems generous. Yeah, it, it does. Like, doesn't it? Uh, three, it, maybe three and a half. It doesn't even seem funny to rewatch. Yeah, um, I'm probably gonna say four out of ten now. Mm. Like the only redeeming parts of this film are the stupid parts now. But back in 2002, I'd have been all over this film. Like, at the time, we didn't, I obviously didn't have any spare money. I didn't choose to go to cinema myself or anything like that. Yeah. But The Rock, you know, you know women in scantily clad clothes. Like, for, a, for a teenager set, who watched The, set the pieces, Rock. Yeah, yeah like, the people's eyebrow. Uh, this, the moment he hit The Rock bottom, I'd have been fucking out of my seat. Yeah. Uh, and then the music. Like yeah, that's yeah, I true. Was angsty yeah. teen. Yeah, that was our kind of music. Yeah. Yeah. So at the time, it would have been a fucking solid ten. You know? Really? Yeah. I like bad films, mate. Yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, I at the time it would have been high on my list. It's fourteen. It's a teenage boy film. No, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It could have been wrote by teenage boys. David Hater loves writing teenage boy shit, doesn't he? So that's the that's the end of the the mini pod. Uh, Hamish Enton had before we leave. No, I just I'm gonna like even bringing this up and remembering all the bad parts of the film is bad enough. So I'm gonna have a few drinks to try and wipe this out of my memory. How good's it been without Dom? Oh, it's been amazing. Yeah. Aye, good. We'll clip this part and we'll make sure you listen to this part yeah. and only this part. I'm liking this new format. Right, <laughs> right. Say goodbye, Hamish. And don't make too much of a speech about it. Goodbye, Hamish, and don't make too much of a speech about it. Goodbye. We'll see you next week. <laughs>